Is it? 
Lord, snow and rain have borne my people's pain. I am well for love of them. The eternal way. I will break the hearts of stone. Give them hearts for love of alone. I will speak.
sky Heaven's all your tabernacle Glory to the Lord on high Count wonders beyond our galaxy You are holy, holy The universe declares your majesty May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Oh, uh-huh. 
abasement of your Son, have raised up a fallen world. Fill your faithful with holy joy, for on those you have rescued from slavery to sin, you bestow eternal gladness. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Zechariah. Thus says the Lord, Rejoice heartily, O daughter Zion. Shout for joy, O daughter Jerusalem. See, your king shall come to you. A just savior is he, meek and riding on an ass, on a coat, the foal of an ass. He shall banish the chariot from Ephraim and the horse from Jerusalem. The warrior's bow shall be banished and he shall proclaim peace to the nations. His dominion shall be from sea to sea, and from the river to the ends of the earth. The word of the Lord. Brothers and sisters, 
you are not in the flesh. On the contrary, you are in the Spirit, if only the Spirit of God dwells in you. Whoever does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. If the Spirit of the one who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, the one who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also through his spirit that dwells in you. Consequently, brothers and sisters, we are not debtors to the f flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. The word of the Lord. I give praise to you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, for although you have hidden these things from the wise and the learned, you have revealed them to little ones. Yes, Father, such has been your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father. No one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son wishes to reveal him. Come to me, all you who labor and are burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am meek and humble of heart, and you will find rest for yourselves. For my yoke is easy and my burden light. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you. When we first look at this gospel, when we first hear it, sometimes we can think that Jesus is trying to tell us, hey, don't be smart. I'm here to tell you that's not what Jesus is saying. Even if that may seem obvious, it is interesting. Some people will try to say that, you know, the more you learn about the faith, the more you actually grow away from God. It's interesting. There are people who will say that. And maybe even in a very subtle way, some of us have believed or kind of unintentionally, unconsciously believed that I just need to be, have a very simple, unlearned faith. Because if I try to learn too much, I might get a little full of myself. There is some of that in our world, in our, in our church, that some people believe that the more you learn, the more you actually do yourself a disservice. And it can seem like at, at the first glance, Jesus is trying to tell us, hey, don't worry about learning and being wise and all that. Just be simple, be little, and be humble. And it can seem like if you know a lot of things, then you automatically are not humble. I'm here to tell you that's not the case. That's not what Jesus is trying to say. In fact, if we really take all of Scripture together, especially this passage, then we see that he's trying to tell us something even 
deeper, even more important. In order to know this, we got to go back. As in most things, in most confusing things that Jesus says, we got to go back into the Old Testament. We go back to a little section of the Bible called the wisdom literature. It's these books that are written in a very different style than most of the Old Testament. They're written most of the time in poetry, in poetic form, and they're all focused basically on the same theme is this idea of wisdom. They all go about it in different ways, but the one thing that almost every book of the so-called wisdom literature, the one thing that almost all of them agree on is that wisdom begins with what is called the fear of the Lord. We read in Proverbs, the beginning of wisdom is fear of the Lord. The beginning of wisdom, in another way to put it, the beginning of wisdom is to be in awe by the Lord, to be totally enamored by the Lord, to be so aware of who the Lord is that we fear not to do anything to separate ourselves from Him. Wisdom begins when we recognize and love the Lord for who He is. Wisdom begins, I'll say it again, when we recognize who the Lord is and we love Him. Essentially, it means that in order for us to have wisdom, real wisdom, actual wisdom, we need to be in relationship with the Lord. And that is what our Lord Jesus Christ tells us in the rest of this passage, in that very beginning part of this, is that he praises his Father because he has revealed to the little ones, the little ones who are not too proud to think that they've got everything together, not too proud to put up this front that they know everything and they have their life in order, not too proud to say, I don't need you, God, to know everything. The little ones are the ones who are humble enough to recognize they know nothing, even with, if they've read every book of theology in the world. They're humble enough to know they know nothing without God. That is what we see. If we look at the lives of the saints, many of them are very learned men and women. Many of them, we have several saints who are declared doctors of the church. And yet all of them, if we look at them all individually, they have something in common, is that they were humble, is that they never claimed their knowledge as their own. St. Thomas Aquinas, one of the most famous of these, and someone who is a very personal patron of mine, has a very famous line where he wrote a treatise about the Eucharist, presented and prayed with it in the chapel. And the Lord spoke to him and said, You have written well of me, Thomas. What do you desire? And he said, Nothing unless you, Lord. Nothing unless I have you. Because this piece of paper means nothing unless I have you. That's the kind of littleness that we need. That's where wisdom begins. When we are in relationship with with God, when we recognize Him as the source of our wisdom, as wisdom Himself. As Jesus tells us in John's Gospel, He is the way, the truth, and the life. And that's why we have to try to learn as much about our faith. As long as we are in relationship with Him, we want to know Him better. Just like in any relationship, the more you come to know someone, the more you fall in love with them. The more you come to know the person whom you are in a relationship with, the more deeply you want to be with them. You want to spend time with them. That is what it means to grow in wisdom. So as we, every day, and at every moment, strive to come to know the faith that has been handed on to us, I pray that that desire is rooted in a desire to want to be closer, to want to grow closer to the Lord who gives us that faith. I pray that you desire to not only read 
about your faith, but to experience that faith in prayer, to spend time with the one who gives you that wisdom. I pray that that excites you enough to want to go and spend moments of prayer with him. So that is where our wisdom lies. It lies in being able to spend time with the one who gives us that wisdom. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Father reveals the mysteries of the kingdom to little ones. Let us pray to our God who shows such love for small and simple folk. For the church in her work of charity, for the poor and the overburdened, let us pray to the Lord. For leaders who will listen to even the humblest citizens, let us pray to the Lord. For people who have shut God out of their lives, let us pray to the Lord. For the children who discover God in our community, let us pray to the Lord. For those who have been called through death to eternal rest, let us pray to the Lord. That through the intercession of Our Lady of Prompt Succor, we will be spared all loss of life and property brought about by this hurricane season. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord of heaven and earth, gathered in obedience to your Son's command, your people ask you to accept their prayers through Christ our Lord. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. Yeah. 
His word by home that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May this oblation dedicated to your name purify us, O Lord, and day by day bring our conduct closer to the life of heaven. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for we know it belongs to your boundless glory that you came to the aid of mortal beings with your divinity, and even fashioned for us a remedy out of mortality itself that the cause of our downfall might become the means of our salvation through Christ our Lord. Through him the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exalted praise as we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. Holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. 
Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Genevieve and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant Francis, our Pope, and Shelton, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children, scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. we dare to say our Father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us deliver us Lord we pray from every evil graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should. 
should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. For those joining us on Facebook, please pray with me in the act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. And we believe 
face of Christ revealed And every person standing by your side Give to one another temples of your Grant, we pray, O Lord, that having been replenished by such great gifts, we may gain the prize of salvation and never cease to praise you through Christ our Lord. Amen. Just two little reminders. First, that we are hearing confessions before every weekday Mass. Just a reminder about that. So we are hearing confessions in the Adoration Chapel to come to confession, you come in through the outside black uh, iron door. So just know that confessions are available for each weekday, weekend, sorry, weekend mass. Also, a reminder, to, starting tomorrow, we are going to be resuming daily masses at 7 a.m. instead of at noon. So starting tomorrow, for all of those who would normally come to daily mass, just know we will have start having daily mass at 7 a.m., not at 12 noon. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life.